Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today's project, I'm going to take these Goldsturm Rebecca out of this shade garden and put them into a sunnier spot out in a place where I want to have more naturalized kind of plantings. So come with me and let's get this job done. You may have heard me say before that I don't like these Black Eyed Susans here because I want this garden to be green shades, white, chartreuse, and if there's a color other than that in here, I want it to be pink or rose or red. And so uh, these gold uh, Black Eyed Susans, they're gorgeous and they're very healthy, but they're not the color I want in this area. And also, I don't really think they get exactly enough sun to thrive as much as they could if they got more sun. So I'm gonna be digging these out today and transplanting them to another section of our property. Now, um, they are blooming still, but I've noticed that some of the flower heads have started to die back. And so they are past their peak bloom cycle. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move them now. Now, if if I wanted to, I could wait until all the blooms are gone and then do that then. Um, so, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now since they're starting to wane and uh, I'm hoping that the transplant process goes smoothly and um, that we are able to have these gorgeous plants in another garden area next year. Like I said, these are Goldsturm Rebecca. Um, they were perennial plant of the year in the 90s, I think, and they've been very popular in the trade since then. And um, they're just so happy. They have these bright gold with the brown centers, truly lovely. They're not bothered by um, disease, as far as I can tell. They don't have much pest damage, although there's a little bit of, uh, that's probably earwig damage there and there. But in general, they're gorgeous and they send up these um, thick stalks and each of the stalks has a nice cluster of flowers at the top. They make good cut flowers if that's something that you're interested in. In fact, I might, in fact I will, I'm going to cut these as cut flowers now so that I can enjoy them inside and then I'll transplant the rest of them. What a good idea. Now that I have the flower stalks off, I can kind of see better where the individual plants are. Now, uh, these plants, um, they spread outward from the original clump. So I'm not going to probably be able to find the original like pot that I put into the ground here. But I'm seeing lots and lots of individual plants that are 
somewhat connected. Like I think this plant here is connected underground to this plant here and to this one here. So they're, they're in clumps. So I'm going to do my best to dig these out in clumps that can stay together. I'm going to try to keep soil on the root balls as much as I can and see how that goes. So here is my first attempt and I'm not able to keep a ton of roots on them or soil on them but a little bit so um, so that's as good as I can do. Now I'm going to gently try to gently <laughs> place this into a container so that I can put them all together and then carry them to their new location. Now some of these, they're really small starts. And you can see that they have joined together underground with this runner system. So I'm trying to keep the soil on the roots, but it's very difficult. I'm doing my best. I was more successful with this one. I'm going to try not to knock any of this soil off. There's my original tag, Black Eyed Susan, Rebecca Fulgita Goldsturm. I bought these in, it doesn't say, but probably 2017. Okay, I got all of the roots of the Rudbeckia out of that area, and I've put them into this carrying bag. And now I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on them. I'm not gonna drown them or anything, but I would just wanna hold them a little bit moist so that I can plant them later in the day um, and have them survive throughout the day with a little bit of moisture. I'm not planting them right now because the area I'm putting them into has full sun right now. It'll be in the shade from about three o'clock on into the evening, so I'll plant these either late afternoon or evening tonight. Okay, so now it's time to plant the Black Eyed Susans that I dug out of the North Side Garden. Um, it's later in the afternoon. I've been working on other projects today, but it's time to get back to these um, Black Eyed Susans. And they're going to go in this area. Let me show you a little bit better. So there's the gate at the bottom of our backyard. And this area is where there used to be a big tree that we had taken down last year. We had them grind the stump and we just had them leave all of the grindings here in place. So this is like, sorry about the flare. Let me get out of the sun. This is all just wood chips that have been sitting here for a year and a half. And now it's pretty decent dirt under there. I've got some baby Joe pieweed here, a few different clumps of it. Uh, they all look different from each other, which is kind of interesting. Uh, we've got some Pacara here. We've got some um, China Girl Hollies. These are Echinacea purpurea. The deer eat all the leaves off of them, but they did flower for me. I have uh, one Budlia here. We've got three um, Leyland Cypress, uh, eight of the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus here, and then up this way, four Skip Laurels in a curve around this um, guy wire and telephone pole, and then one more Cryptomeria Japonica, that's the, uh, I think, Yoshino? Is that the one we have? I can't remember. 
Anyway, so in this area here where that pokeweed, by the way, that's the pokeweed that poisoned me and I have it all over my body now because I cut this guy down. Anyway, in this area here is where I'm going to be putting the Black Eyed Susans. I did put some in last year um, and the deer ate them. So what are you going to do? I'm going to try again and see if I can get them to grow in this location. These are hostas or also known as salad for the deer. I've laid the clumps out kind of just in a, a space on uh, in this area that's about I'd say five feet left to right and four feet top to bottom so I'm just gonna dig holes and put in some biotone and get these in the ground. So oh, this project is done. I'm really happy to have these beautiful plants out of my pink, green, and white garden and into what I'm hoping will become a wildflower garden. I know that Goldstem rubecchia are not particularly wild. They are a, ver um, a cultivar, but they are just so gorgeous and the pollinators love them. So I'm hoping that this will be a nice, beautiful stand of them. Uh, next summer. So I just got to keep the deer off of them and I'm continuing to try to figure out how best to do that but it's always an ongoing struggle. If this doesn't work I haven't really lost anything because I didn't want the plants where they were. So trying them here is kind of a free except for my work maybe. Can consider it that way. So what do you think? Do you think these will work here? I hope so. Thank you so much for watching me on this project today. I hope you're having a wonderful time in your garden. I hope your weather has broken. Ours is gorgeous here, and I've been very grateful to have some cooler days over these last three or four days. I hope the same for you. And I hope that you are going to join us again in another video real soon. Uh, maybe subscribe, hit that like button. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Thanks so much, friends. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.